let's make an actual coffee cake. Sexy when she knows it. Deep, 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 deep. Holy shit. It's a fun sound, isn't it? I want you to sniff. <laughs> Smell it. So moist. Wow. More flavor, more nutrition, more joy, more color, more excitement. This is good mood food. I'm talking about coffee cake with espresso powder in it. Instead of just coffee cake that's plain and boring and simple, we're also adding brown butter, which adds notes of caramel and toffee, and using Greek yogurt for a boost of protein and to add a little extra moistness. We're starting off by making the most delicious streusel. I always have trouble saying that word, streusel. It has brown sugar. I'm using a dark brown sugar here, and then it has espresso. Sorry about that. <laughs> it has espresso powder in there and a touch of cinnamon, so you're getting the cinnamon espresso flavor in every single bite. Add this all to a bowl. And in my streusel recipes, I always love to use a salted melted butter. First of all, salt equals flavor. So the more salt, the better. So I say, why not use salted butter? And then also I think the melted butter really does help bring everything together. So it's clumpy and has those nice, crumbs that you're looking for in a coffee cake. We're gonna measure out some flour for the streusel. I want you guys to pay attention because most people are measuring their flour incorrectly, especially if you're not using a scale. So if you're not using a scale, I want you to fluff up your flour. Just like get in there, stir it, fluff it, have some fun. You want to get some air into the flour. Then you're gonna use a spoon and spoon it into your measuring cup, just like this. Don't shake it, don't get sassy with it. Just keep it super chill. Then get a butter knife, flat side, and just level it out. And that is how you perfectly measure your flour without a skip. Add that in. Give that a good mix before you add that butter. One of the reasons I use dark brown sugar in my recipes is because it has more molasses flavor, more moisture, just I love it. That's why, don't ask me questions. Okay, melted butter is going in. And then sort of start to bring this together with a fork. You're gonna need to get your hands a little bit dirty because we want to create those nice clumps. Just work it in there. All that flour, all that sugar. And that just creates the most delicious, like crunchy topping. I love it so, so much. All right, that looks pretty good to me. It's clumpy, it's good. We're gonna stick this in the fridge while we brown our butter. Let's go. Whew. I love browning butter because it adds these really nice caramel and toffee notes to basically any baked good recipe and it just really helps to elevate the flavor. It's also a very simple process. It takes about five minutes from start to finish. So the first thing you wanna do is slice your butter into about half inch pieces so that it helps it to brown very evenly. We're gonna do this over a medium heat and just add your butter in. The first thing that's gonna happen is the butter is obviously going to melt and then it's gonna start to crackle. And it'll be very loud and pronounced. Don't be nervous. You wanna stir pretty consistently throughout this whole process so that the butter isn't burning on one side of the pan and so that it spreads out evenly and the milk solids that go to the bottom of the pan can get nice and toasty. Holy oh, Okay, so after a few minutes, you'll notice that the crackles will start to simmer in volume. And as soon as that butter starts to foam, that's when you know the browning process is happening. So you wanna make sure you're stirring very frequently at that point. And as soon as it turns a nice golden amber color, you're going to remove it from the heat. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you brown butter. We're gonna let this cool for about five minutes while we whip up the rest of the cake ingredients start off by mixing my wet ingredients together. So what makes this cake that <laughs> what makes this cake extra moist is the addition of Greek yogurt. Whenever I'm using Greek yogurt in a baking recipe, I always love to use a full fat or a 2% Greek yogurt because it's going to make your baked goods a little bit more moist and fat equals flavor. That's what I say. Next up, we've got some eggs. Ah, look at that gorgeous yolk. A little or a lot of vanilla. Always measure vanilla with your heart. I say about a tablespoon. 
sometimes I find myself adding way more. A little bit of milk. Really any milk you have on hand is perfect for this recipe, it doesn't matter. And then we are sweetening this with my best friend, dark maple syrup. Any pure maple syrup will work, but I just find the maple notes in this cake are absolutely fantastic, especially paired with that espresso and the little touch of cinnamon. I'm a huge maple syrup and coffee fan. Last but certainly not least, espresso powder. If you don't have this, go to the store and pick it up. So good, you can add it to cookies, cakes, frostings. If you are a coffee lover like myself, it's delicious. You're gonna whisk all of this together until it's well combined. My husband drinks about a pot of coffee a day. We literally have to make two pots of coffee every single day and his favorite like breakfast treat is a coffee cake. So that's where this recipe kind of came to life because I wanted to combine the two flavors together. Next up, dry ingredients. Again, fluff your flour, get it nice and aerated and then measure. I'm using all purpose flour, but if you wanted to make this a little bit more nutritious, then you could absolutely use something like a white whole wheat flour or a whole wheat pastry flour. Coffee cakes are truly like, the best thing to bring for a brunch treat or anytime you have to entertain baby showers, Mother's Day, Easter, that sort of thing. I just love to have them on hand because they're super simple to throw together. You can make them ahead of time too. And then we've got a little bit of baking powder, baking soda. I like to use both to make sure that the cake has a really, really nice crumb. A little kosher salt, and then you can kind of just mix this up with your teaspoon, it doesn't really matter. Some people say that baking has to be super precise. I say do what makes you happy, as in follow the recipe, please, but also live a little. I'm gonna add in my dry ingredients to the wet ingredients, and then we will just mix that up until it's well combined. You do not wanna overmix, so if it's just a little bit lumpy, that's totally fine, don't worry about it. We still gotta add our delicious brown butter in, so go and get that. It has cooled off for about five minutes and it smells like caramel and I'm obsessed. I wanna drink it out of this pan. Pour that baby in. Oh my gosh, how gorgeous is that? And then I just wanna make sure that you scrape every little bit of brown butter into this coffee cake because it makes all of the difference. See that right there? That's where the flavor is of the brown butter. And it's what's going to make this espresso chocolate chip coffee cake taste like it has caramel bits in it. And just gently stir that in. You're gonna kind of fold it in like that. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I would love for you guys to see more of my videos. I've got a lot of fun stuff coming up to put you in a good mood. You know what I mean? <laughs> So this will be nice and smooth and well combined and absolutely stunning. And then we're gonna take our chocolate chips, measure by the heart, but like if you wanna measure, it's about three fourths cup. Or a cup, whatever you're feeling. You can use dark chocolate chips, semi-sweet, dairy-free, though that won't really matter if you've browned your butter, so sorry. Fold those in, and we're gonna pour it into our pan. All right, I've got the streusel, um, and I'm using a springform pan, but you could absolutely use something like a nine-inch pan. I just love how when I take the edges off of this, that it looks so pretty, and I can kind of serve it as is. So you're gonna add all of that batter in. Now, some people do a layer of the streusel in the middle, but I love all of the crunchy bits on top because I want to enjoy them. I want to get all up in those crunchy bits. Do I? I don't. Does she? <laughs> Spread it out. Just and so it's nice and even. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. It smells like a cappuccino. Like, wow. I want you to sniff this. <laughs> Smell it. <laughs> All right, streusel on top. Also, for the streusel, if you wanted, you could add some chopped pecans in here to just really level it up a little bit. I would say a half cup of chopped pecans on top or even in the cake is delicious if you want a little crunch in there. Yummy, yummo, yum yums, <laughs> daddy. But see, this is what I'm talking about when you get that streusel. So look at this nice big chunk. Mm. I'm gonna love biting into that later. And that's it. Look at that bad boy. It's cute. All right, we're gonna bake this. 
I don't remember how long, but I'll let you know in the recipe. <laughs> We're gonna make the most scrumptious espresso glaze because I really like to take things up and be extra, extra all of the time. So you're gonna start with some warm milk and then add in a tiny bit of espresso powder. You could also use instant coffee in this recipe if you don't have any espresso powder. Mix that up until it dissolves and the warm milk or water will help that. Next, add in some powdered sugar and just a little bit of vanilla. I know I always say measure with your heart, but when it comes to glazes, I really do want you to measure it with a measuring spoon and not your heart, sorry. Whisk that together. And if it is too thick, you can always add a little splash of milk. I'm talking like a half teaspoon at a time, but generally I find this to be perfect. And that's that. We're gonna glaze the cake when it comes out of the oven. We have to wait till it chills, but let's just do it. Oh, baby. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that stunning crumb coating. I'm gonna let this cool before glazing it, but so far it just smells like a cappuccino, brown sugar, caramel situation, and I, I wanna get into it. Coffee cake has cooled, so one of the best parts about this pan is that you can simply unbuckle it, is what I like to say, and slowly, hold on. Coffee cake has cooled, so now it's time to do the big unveil, so here we go. Just pops right out. And that's one of the best parts about using that pan, like I said, is that you just get this beautiful view. Now we're going to glaze it with that glaze we made earlier. That's how it should look. And then you just get your drizzle on. Back and forth, back and forth. Make sure you do this over a surface that has parchment paper under it, otherwise you're gonna get glaze all over. Like, holy shit, this is so cute, so cute. And the glaze does not have to be perfect by any means. Also, it's not an aggressive glaze, meaning there's not too much, too little. It's just the perfect amount to get a little more espresso flavor in every single bite. You can cut it. Look at that crunch. A little crunch from that topping. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? That's so good. Now that is what I call good mood food. The 